Hi. Hi. Welcome to uh, Patrick in the Studio. This is going to be the first of what I hope are 10 drawing lessons. This is very basic, very simple. So what we're going to do is, well, what I'm going to do is draw that pair and show you how I would draw it. So for that purpose, I have some vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is very lightweight, easy to work with uh, form of charcoal. There's also compressed charcoal, which I may or may not use. I also have a white charcoal pencil. Again, just having these things on hand. I have a kneaded eraser, so forth and so on. Okay, so some basic tools, in other words. And I have a chamois. Just to show you, I'm going to use a dirty chamois. It's a little piece of leather. It's all full of charcoal already. This is what they look like clean. When they're clean, they look more like an eraser. They act like an eraser. When they're dirty, they're good for putting what I call some schmutz on your paper like that. So what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to put some charcoal on the paper. Okay. So I'm going to do this. Take a little piece of vine charcoal. With the side of it, I'm going to add some value to the paper. Like so. Let's get a little closer. There we go. I'm just basically giving the, the paper some value. Rather than just start drawing on a piece of white paper, I'm going to create a middle value, and you'll see how that operates in this particular type of a drawing. There we go. Now I'm going to take my dirty shammy. That's pretty uneven, and I'm going to blend that in a little bit and smooth it out with the dirty shammy like this. There we go. So clean shammies have a purpose, and dirty shammies have a purpose. So far, so good. Now what I want to do is I want to start by drawing a contour vine that describes the shape of my object, in other words, that pair. So I'm going to take my vine charcoal and I'm going to measure the pair from left to right or through its widest part, okay? So I'll put this tip of my vine charcoal against the right side of the pair then move my thumb up to the left. So what I have is a measurement of the width of the charcoal. Then I'm going to take that width and measure the height of the of the pair I meant. So that pair is one and approximately a half times the width. So I'm going to start with the line here. It doesn't matter how big or small I make it, as long as the line that I put vertically is one and a half times that line. So I'm going to make this line as long as my piece of charcoal. In fact, I might even make it a little longer. make it this long. That makes it bigger than for you to see it. All right, there we go. Nice and dark. And then one and a half. So one and a half. That includes the stem, by the way. So I've drawn a rectangle. It works for any type of object. No matter how complex, this one's rather simple, but this re rectangle represents then the height and the width of my pair. Now what I want to do is use that to put the shape of the pair, do a contour line of the pair. I'm going to take my charcoal again and put it against the left side of the pair like this and measure its shape. I'm giving my eye a measuring stick or a straight line which, against which I'm measuring it. So I'll put it measuring the bottom looks like that. And then as we come up the side, it looks like this. All right. And again, as I said, there's a stem there. So the stem comes in like so as I measure it, all right? Then we measure the right side of it, and the right side then touches over here and comes in a little bit more of an angle like so. All right, there we go. And then the bottom of the pair seems somewhat rounded, of course. There we go. So there's a contour line drawing of my pair, all right? Now I can take my dirty chamois. I can get rid of these lines. I don't think I need them anymore. Get rid of them. Now, really important thing, when your eye looks at anything, it's always judging it according to the context. Your eye is not this sort of impartial observer. It's always using what's around it to understand what it sees. A very important part of this is that shadow on the table. That's coming like this. Light's coming like this and creating a shadow. You can see a little bit of it here. What I'm going to do is measure the width of my pair again, then I'm going to measure the length of that shadow against the width of the pair. So if my pair is that wide, the shadow is about half that width. So if I measure from here to here, and then take that measurement, half that measurement, my shadow comes out about half of what that is. So we need to measure half of this and do that. And there we go. And then the shadow comes out a little bit below the pair. As I hold my vine chocolate again, so I'm looking at it in relationship to the bottom of the pair versus the bottom of the shadow. There's a little space between, in other words, the shadow comes a little bit below the pair, right about here. 
As I hold this against the back edge of the shadow, I see that it's coming out behind the pair, right about here, okay? And then one more measurement, little tail end of the shadow here. I'm gonna measure that as well, and that's coming in right about here. So these four lines describe the width of my shadow and then the height of it in the context of my drawing. Again, I'll take my vines. Well, before I do that, I'm gonna then draw the shadow inside that rectangle. I'm gonna measure the shape of the shadow even. It comes up like this, comes out behind it like that. So that shadow tells you three very important things. It tells you about the shape of the object, right? Because it's based on the shape of the object. It tells you about the direction and the strength of your light source. And also it connects your object to the surface it's sitting on. Without it, your object is just floating on the paper. There we go. And I'm gonna do a little editing here. You know, a good artist is not someone who draws perfectly, but what a good artist is is a good editor. That's very important to remember. All right, now I'm gonna add some value, perhaps a little more to the pair, because the pair is not a white pair, it's a green pair. So in other words, what we call the local value of the pair. So I'm gonna make that pair a little bit darker here. And then I'm gonna make my shadow, I'm gonna look at this, is what's darker, the shadow on the pair or the shadow on the table? I think the shadow on the pair is a little bit darker than the shadow on the table. I'll take some vine charcoal, put some value in there, blend it with my finger. And I could use my chamois to do this, or I could use what's called a stump. A stump is a little cardboard tube for blending, but I just like to use my fingers, quick and immediate. Yeah. So I'm gonna add some value on this side of the pier for the shadow, get my lights coming in from this direction, therefore light versus shadow. All right, there we go. And then I'll blend it in, like so. There we go, so far so good. I wanna add some light to the other side of it. And for that, I'm gonna use my gum eraser, or my kneaded eraser, actually. Add a little light here, a little light there. All right, so far so good. Where the shadow goes underneath the pair, right under here, it gets a little darker. Remember, dark recedes, when it comes to work with value, what I'm doing is creating an illusion. And that illusion is that dark recedes, so if I'm making the shadow darker here, in relationship to the pair, it gets that shadow to go behind the pair, right? Right where it goes underneath, in other words, it gets very dark under here. Now, if I want to make it darker, I can use my compressed charcoal. The other thing about compressed charcoal is it's more permanent charcoal. In other words, when you use it, it's not as easy to erase. So I'm always set things up with my vine charcoal, and then I come with my compressed charcoal. Here we go. And even my stem has a little shadow on it versus light. I want to create a little bit lighter value, perhaps. I want to put some highlights in and see what that looks like. A little highlight there, a little highlight over here. So light comes forward. Now this line that I drew on this side is a line. Lines have a tendency to flatten things out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend that line in to the paper on its inside edge and therefore, therefore creating a little darker value on that pair because the lightest value is gonna be the highlight. That's where the light hits the object and bounces out at you. But this, the light hits this edge and bounces back in that direction. So it's not gonna be as light as what's going on in here. And that's gonna get that edge to curve away from your eye and therefore make your drawing, your pair more three dimensional. The same with on this side. We'll make that edge a little darker, darker down in here, all right? Now also there's a background, look, checking my time here. Background and foreground, I'm gonna measure where the back edge of my setup is here, right here. And then I'm gonna lighten the table with my eraser. Defining the content, remember context is important. All right, like so, blend that in a little bit. And then the background is darker. All right, there we go. And you can see, then, there's a drawing of a pair using vine charcoal. All right. All right, and a little bit of compressed charcoal. All right, there you go. Let's do a close-up of that. Mm -hmm. All 
All right, there you go. Thank you, everyone.